Unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you've been using tools like ChatGPT and Claude AI to do some wonderful things and save a lot of time. There's two problems. And the first problem I'm reading about quite a lot on the internet. Problem one, if you use ChatGPT and you put confidential information into it, it's gonna learn from your data. So it trains on that data. So theoretically, when another person outside of your company asks a question, potentially they can get some of your sensitive data back, which is a big no-no. The second problem is that in order to get the most out of ChatGPT and Claude AI, you need to get really good at prompts. And there's actually a whole job role coming now called prompt engineer. And I'm sure if you've been to one of the many sites or been on YouTube or TikTok, you're going to be seeing lots and lots of people sharing their prompts. And in fact, there's whole sites dedicated to it. And some of the prompts are that big. And it obviously makes sense because the more precise you can be with your prompts, the better the output you're going to get. So let's address the first problem. Chat GPT, as I said, at the time of recording this, it's going to train from your data. However, if you use the OpenAI API, and OpenAI are the company behind Chat GPT, they go to great lengths to tell you that they do your inputs and outputs do not become part of the training data unless you explicitly opt in. This is well worth a read. Have a good read of that, and you'll see that they can the GDPR compliant, CPA compliant, HIPAA compliant, SOC 2 compliant. So it's become a big thing for them. So I believe actually, if you read all that documentation and you're happy, you can use the APR in order to use something like ChatGPT behind the scenes. Dead simple, we need to do sign up, it's per usage. So once you sign up, you'll basically be charged when you use the API and you get a key from that, which you're gonna to need to use in the apps that use the API. Sounds really scary, many tools nowadays require no code to connect to something like this. And this is what I'm going to show you today because I've got a demo of something I built in Power Apps. The other problem I mentioned is the ability to reuse your prompts that you create. And not only for you, but also for your team. And as an example, we run quite a few workshops at Club 365. And as part of those workshops, we have to send three emails, usually the week or two before, that tell our email list about the workshop. And we've got a certain style for each type of workshop and that saves us time. And it also means that not only I can do them, also Fraser can do them. But the problem is in order to create the emails, we have to share the prompt that we do. And so what I wanted to do is just give you an example that's through the four of how you could create a central repository of prompts that your team could use. And so what I've done here in this demonstration, I've got a list which is called prompt list. It's a SharePoint list. And I've got three prompts, improve the grammar, which is read the following text, improve to use better grammar, translate to French, read the following text in Vernage French, perform calculation, act like a calculator, use the following text, evaluate and calculate the answer. Only give me the answer and don't just fail, you got to the answer. These are really simple prompts. And as you use this more as a company, you'll keep improving this. In fact, we've got a whole prompt system that's done actually in Airtable. And we're constantly improving our prompts that both Fraser and uh, the other chaps on the team share with me. I can show you that in another video, that's really cool. But let's just go through this one today. So let's just see how this works. So I've got some really bad texts. Next Monday, I wanna to go to the pub as I'm gonna be well hungry. So I'm hoping that OpenAI is gonna improve that now for me, and it has. So next Monday, I want to go to the pub because I'm going to be very hungry. So it's improved the grammar. And then maybe I wanna go and turn that into French. So here we go. I'm not going to be able to say this is right, but I presume that's right the French. If we are French, just let me know. I've also got another one here, which is perform calculation. So for example, if I wanted to do seven times 10 divided by 19, I can do calculations as well, Yeah, 0 0.36. And that's given me a nice answer. And you might find a use for that. And because you've been very specific with your prompts, you could almost rely on that output that you got there, pipe that into a variable and use it somewhere else. So like the world is your oyster. You don't even have to limit it to our prompts. You've probably got hundreds of prompts of your own business to use. In fact, let's just go create one now I'm gonna show you. Let's say we wanna create JavaScript. Write JavaScript. Act as a developer and write me a JavaScript function for the following requirements. Okay, let's save that. Now, what I need to do, because the app's not started, I need to go and start the app again. So I'm just going to refresh, run app on start, run that, and I've got, oh, I wrote JavaScript, it's bad. Let's just say, hello world in a div, send the prompt. Is that gonna work? 
Sure, here's a JavaScript function, hello world. You might want to form that this a little bit better, but deep down in here, there's your function to say hello world. And so what you could do is you could have a whole list of prompts that your company uses, and you could even get really flash with them. And you could say only certain teams could do this and maybe put some like security around them. And you could put some login of things that you're sending out from OpenAI. So it gives you some uniformity across your company and consistency more importantly. So let's see how we built this. The Power App, as you can imagine, it is simple. But when you click this button, what's happening is we're calling Power Automate Flow there. It's an instant flow that's instantiated by Power Apps. So let's go create this flow. I've got another version over here because I don't want to keep you any longer than I have to. I'm going to go and create a new flow now. And I'm going to create an instant cloud flow. And I'm going to do ChatGPT2 Power Apps Create. And so the first thing you'll notice is that it's already put me a trigger in. No additional steps are needed because this is going to be fired by the power app, which we'll hook up later. But I found this probably best to create your power up flow before the power app. So you can select it later, but it's totally up to you. You can do it whichever way you want to. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and create a HTTP action. And it's going to be the standard one. And it's a premium connector, by the way, that one. And I want it to be post. And I need to go and post this URI in here. If you go to the documentation on the OpenAI site, you'll find all of these are really well documented. So let's have a look in documentation, developers. And here you go. This is pretty much everything you want to do. So you can go to quick starts and you can find out how to use everything in there. Next up, we need to pass a key in. So obviously, OpenAI don't want everybody using their AI because it costs them money. And so what you do is when you sign up, you'll be given a key. And that key needs to be pasted in here. So once you've logged into the OpenAI account, you'll be given a key, paste it in here, but leave the word bearer with a space. I'm obviously going to change that after this demonstration. So if you try and use that, then it's not going to work. The next thing we need to do is we need to go and put some JSON in the body. So what we're doing is we're saying we're going to use the 3.5 turbo model. You can use four as well if you want. We're passing in the information that comes up from the Power App, the role of user, maximum tokens 1,000, the temperature zero. I'm not going to go into those right now, but if you want to have a look at those, they're all documented and they just allow you to fine tune what you can do with OpenAI. So now we've got something triggered from Power Apps that's going to pass its data up. We're going to go off to OpenAI. We're going to ask for a chat completion. And then the next thing we need to do, we're going to get something back from OpenAI and it'll be formatted in JSON. Pass JSON, we need one of those. And what we're going to go and do is we're going to take that body there and I've got a schema in here already, which I'm going to, just going to copy. And I'm going to paste that into there because I know what the schema is. And the way I generated that, by the way, is I ran the flow once and I got the raw output and I pasted it in and did generate from sample, but I know what it is now. So that schema just tells the subsequent actions about the data that's coming in. And so that means that you can then pick it in dynamic content expressions, etc. Then after that, what I want to do is I want to initialize a variable because we're going to create a variable that effectively ends up with the final response that OpenAI has sent us. I'm going to go and create a variable, initialize a variable, and I'm going to call it prompt response. Whoops. It's going to be of type string, and the value is going to be nothing at the moment. I'm just creating the variable so I can set it later. Then what I need to do is because I've got some JSON coming back, this can get a little bit confusing. And I don't really like the way Power Ops made does it, but it's what it is. So what we need to do now is we need to do apply to each because within that JSON that comes back from Power Automate, there is actually an array in there. And what we need to do is we need to go around the array, even though there's only one element in it. We're going to apply to each, select output from previous steps. So we're going to pick choices. Choice, I'm going to pick that in there. I'm going to get rid of that because otherwise that's errors. And then inside of this, all we need to do is append and a string variable and the string variable we're going to append to is our variable that we've already initialized and then i need to create an expression here and so i'm going to copy here's one i prepared earlier i'm going to put, create an expression in there honky dory so now what's going to happen is going to go through the choices array within the json output that's come back and we're going to extract the message content and next up, all we need to do very simply is respond to power apps. So respond to a power app or flow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text box 
which is called open AI response. And then the value is going to be our prompt response. Honky dory, save that. So let me just show you how you create the Power App. I'm not going to create this one from scratch because I think it's very simple, it's easy to show you. So the key parts are, I've got a label here, I've got a drop down, and the drop down is bound to the SharePoint list. So if you look at my data here, I've got a prompts list and I've got an all prompts collection. So I poke, what I effectively do in the app on start, I take the prompt list data and I put it into the all prompts collection. I've also got a connection through to the Power Automate flow. Let's just show you the app on start. So I've got a collection there, which is clear collect all prompts. I'm creating a new collection called all prompts and I'm putting the prompt list into it. And then I'm binding the drop down list, the all prompts title. So I'm showing a nice friendly title. So that's the title we also on that SharePoint list. I've got another text box where I'm going to put the prompt. And then finally, I've got a button which goes off and sends the text you type in here along with your prompts. Now, obviously we don't want to send the prompt title. We want to send the actual prompt from the list. So remember the SharePoint list I showed you, we need to be able to show that. So we need to pass this prompt here, not that, when we go up to Power Automate. And so the way we do that is we do a lookup in our prompt list and we look for the selected title. So whatever we select here, we look up for the selected title and we go find the prompt. And then we concatenate that with a space to what we type in the text box. So effectively, we're merging the prompt from the SharePoint list that we've selected with whatever we type in the text box. And then we send that up to Power Automate, which then goes off to OpenAI and we get a response back. And then I write this, the response is the equivalent to this label. So just to go through there, the label is bound. So the text property is bound to a variable called response. And then when we send that up, to Power Automate, we get a response back in this variable, which changes the text there. And it really is that simple. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you've got any questions whatsoever, then put some comments in wherever you watch this YouTube or in the community. I hope that gives you some inspiration. It's not meant to be the world's best application, but it gives you an idea of how you can use the OpenAI in service for better privacy and also how you can start to share prompts amongst your team.